Hello everyone and welcome to Shard TCG. My name is James and today we're going to be looking at how to draw space in Inkscape. Now as you can see on the screen right now we have a picture of space. Now this took me five to ten minutes to do and I'm just going to run through step by step what I did to get this result. It's actually really easy to do. You basically need zero drawing skills to draw this. Okay, so let's dive in. So the first thing we want to do on Inkscape is get this box, create rectangle and squares. Okay, we're going to cover up the screen with this. And we're going to get rid of the stroke. We're going to go to fill. If you haven't got this on the side of your menu, it's fill and stroke. That's shift control F says right there. So we're going to get this. Right, we've already got the purple, that's good. Now we want to use this one, the Radiant Gradient. The first thing you need to do with the Radiant Gradient is get this off Alpha. And that's where it is right here. So if you click on this right here, move the Alpha to Maximum, like so. And then you want to find the colour here. I like to use the HSL colour wheel so I can just find about there. You can even brighten it up a bit. And then you want to click this center one, like so. And then I like a nice cyan. If you want to do it like me, go with cyan. But of course, it's your space. You make whatever you like. Right? And we like it full, full vibrant. You know, not nothing saturated. Full vibrant. About in the middle. Not too light, not too dark. Now, this picture uses a lot of filters. That's why it's specific to Inkscape how we draw it. So now we want to go over to the filters here. Okay. We're going to click filters. We're going to go right to the bottom. We're going to click textures. And then we're going to click ink paint. Click that. Lovely. Look at that. Now this is why I had it darker before. It's because that, that looks like a bit much. There we go. And if you don't want the textures to be as strong, you can even expand it a bit. So yeah, we're going to leave it like this so it's uh, expanded and we'll be focusing on everything within the picture here. Now, another little tip, if you can't see the picture frame above your work, you need to click Control, Shift and D and it'll bring up your document properties. And then it's just this one here, border on top of drawing. So if I untick that, it disappears. I can't see it. If I tick that, I can see it. Handy little thing to have. Also, your picture may not have started in a portrait form. You can also change that here. Change it to pixels, 1920 by 1080, and you're done. Now, I would normally recommend different layers, but if you just want to do a quick picture and you're confident you're not going to make mistakes, you don't really have to. So we're going to click the Bezier tool. We're going to have it set to none. And then now we're just going to do lots of spikes. Yeah. I'm going to leave that gap there. You'll see why. And we want them nice and thin. We don't want them too big and broad. Some, sometimes we just want them close. Sometimes we want them far away. So I'll just do a few more of these. Like so. And we'll have a, a few on this side, right? So they're going to look like big gnashing teeth. Got that? Lots and lots of spikes. Simple as bring that one back in like that The shapes don't have to be anything special. Don't overthink this part. Okay And then we connect have to join it back up again Then we add the fill and we change that to black Did you get that or was that too quick? Once you've connected it you go around spike it one way then you go up and spike it the other way and then you connect it. Then everything in the middle becomes filled when you click on the fill tool and you click on this one. So normally it would be like that. You want it like that. Okay, so I assume you all got that now. Now we're going to click filters again, textures, and we're not going to click ink paint this time. We're going to click ink blot. Now I've got this saved from last time. We want a live preview. 
and you can see the effect it's going to create right here. These are the settings I used last time, but really you have to find what looks right to you. So maybe that's a little bit too displaced. Do we want a blending a little bit perhaps? Complexity, depending on your style, you could go very uncomplex, but I like to I like to have it up there. Frequency, as you can see, makes it more staticky almost, like very detailed. We we want a, a low frequency. So it's very blobby, very thick and blobby. And variations will just randomize it. So if you think you've got the right consistency, but it doesn't look correct, just run through the variations and see what looks right to you. Do we go with that one? I think we will. So we'll apply that and then we'll close it because that is there. We're just going to enlarge it a bit because I want to see more darkness on the screen. Okay, looking good so far. You know what? I'm going to be picky. I'm not sure about the angle, so I'm just going to I'm just going to do that. Not really necessary. That's just me. So now what we're going to do is just put in a few stars and we're not just going to do simple dots. We're going to go to create stars and polygons. We're going to have it set to stars. We're going to want four corners, right? Definitely four corners. We're going to hold down control and make a star like that. Hold down control so it stays upright. We want to change that to white. And we want to be about this shape. When you bring in a star for the first time, it, it could be any shape, really. It could it could be like that. It could be like that, you know. So just, just find the right shape for you once again. I'd say about there. And obviously, we don't want the stars to be that big. I think our biggest star will be about that size. So we're good with that. Now, we want to use the blur tool in the fill and stroke section again. And we're just going to blur it up like so. And for some people might like this, if you just hold down shift and pull down the bottom bit, you can elongate the star. But that's some people's preferences. What you can do as well is copy the star, control C right now, elongate the star just a little bit. Then you paste the star. Now this is the original star. Con hold control down and bring it there we go, perfect 45 degrees. And you can just put that in the middle like that. But that's quite large, so what you want to do as well is just shrink it down just a tad, like so. There we go, our first star. So now we're just going to add the rest. Now I like to do one big one like this, and then the rest tend to be more simpler stars. So there we go. And you just click again. So you do, you just click the image if you want to change from rotating to the size. And then we're just going to copy and paste this star here and there. And now at that size, we're going to put lots of these little ones around because we've got to fill up. We've got a big galaxy to fill here. So just control V after you've copied it and you can just put them wherever you like. Now. We're getting a bit bored of that color and I like a, I like a bit of color in my galaxy. So I'm going to add some yellow stars here and there. That makes things a bit nicer. And then I'm going to add some green stars. So I change it to green. I hold control C to copy it again. And then I just spam the V button again. I have some green ones just dotted about. We're going to have some magenta ones. So control C once you change it to magenta. And then just pop them here and there. I think we're happy with the stars right now. I'm assuming everybody else has their stars ready. So the next step is we would like some planets. Now the planets are really easy to do. Just going to create circle. I'll hold down control and shift. We'll make a circle. If we take off control and shift, you can see it goes a bit everywhere. I like control for the consistent shape and I like shift because it keeps it in the center. So control and shift keeps it nice and round like that. And we want the alpha on full. And now we're going to use the radial gradient. Put that on like so. We want to move that D 
down to the bottom corner of the planet. Then we want to click on the outer radiant and we want to increase the opacity back up to full and we want to lower the lightness down to black. All right, you see how that's done? Now, if you hold that again, control shift and just bring it out, bring it out to where it looks good. Now, what color do we want this planet? We're going to go with a green planet. Okay, so we've got to bring the saturation up. And I think that's a bit much. We'll do that. Now, you could leave the planet like that, but it looks very focused. Very, very focused. So what we like to do is just blur it up a little bit just to take the focus off it. Then there, you've got your planet. Now we're going to do the same again. I'm going to just control D to duplicate that. I'm going to put a planet down here as well, like so. And I think this planet will be like a nice yellow one. And then we get a dark blue one like so. There we go. That looks good. And then the same with this one, radial gradient. Bring it down to here. Then we click on this. Increase the alpha, lower the lightness, and it's it's a nice, easy 3D effect. Yeah, these ones are very focused in, so we're just going to blur. Small one might be a bit further away, so we can give that one a bit more of a blur. Now you might want to ring around the planet, because that's what I did in the example. Because this is 2D, we can't just draw behind it and draw in front of it and make a circle like that. But there's a, a nice optical trick you can do where we just do this and do that. There, we've got our line. You see what I did there? I'm going to undo that, show it again. All right? So we click on the bezier, we've got non set. We click and move over this direction, then we release. And then we've got this bendy bit. Then we want to click in the middle until it looks right, like so, and then release. And then we click again and then release. And then we click enter to unlock the lot. And then we've got the line around the planet. Now we want to duplicate that. We want to move that out here like so now this bit's a bit hard to see but it is highlighted right here so now we just want to move that so it looks correct like so and this one needs to be above there so let's see how that looks now so i want to click on this other line like so highlight those two and then we're going to go up here and we're going to join the selected nodes so click that and it becomes one thing and we highlight those two join selected nodes there we are now we want to add some fill take away the lines we want to highlight that probably again that more a more vibrant a more vibrant color so let's see how that looks now because i had to go in a bit blind with that that's why it's good if you put in different layers you could hide the background and you would just see it on a white background instead of going behind it we've just had it fade into nothing on both sides it's a little bit of a cheat but people won't be looking at that when they're looking at your lovely galaxy so now that doesn't look very good and we don't want to get too too much into shading, so we could just use a linear gradient or a radial gradient. It's up to you. If I click linear gradient, like so, we can keep the light consistent with the planet. We could even have that fade to nothing. And then we want to add some blur. Yeah, so now that we've just put that radiant tool on, you can see that the rest of the ring hides in the shadow of the planet 
Right, so the last thing I want to add is just asteroids. Now asteroids are quite simple to do. Simplest way to explain it would be just to do a tier shape. So just do a, a nice big tier. Very long tier. Or you can just do a normal shape tier like that. This shape will be about the most skillful thing you have to do in this entire picture. So now we just want to bring it right down so it's nice and narrow. And then when you're happy with the shape, you turn, have a go across your screen like so. And then we want to add the linear gradient, gradient to it and bring that line there and that line there. So it fades into nothing. And then we'll probably want a nice strong color for this. So like a, a ready orange. Like that, that's quite nice. And even though this gradient goes to nothing, it'll still take in a bit of color. So you leave that alpha on zero and put in like a nice yellow and you'll see the orange turn to a yellow. So there we go. And we want to blur it up just a bit. Probably want to elongate this some more. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. Probably elongate it loads, really, couldn't you? Oh, there we go. That's the trick. So now we can duplicate that. We can put in another one, Control D, duplicate. Make this one very small. And then it's just a case of moving these over to the new one like that all right there we go we've got some asteroids yeah and and that's that's it that's that's our universe okay so there's a fun trick on how to draw space and what i would really love is for people to show me how their drawings came out as well and if you would like to share please join us on the shard tcg discord and post in the artwork section the link is in the description below and i look forward to seeing everybody's results don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.